So um, I'm glad to uh, introduce our LectoHype project, which consists in um, running HDR on notary registers. Right, and um, notary registers are finding aids uh, of their own um, as uh, notaries are bound to write down uh, the deeds they um, issue, uh, such as um, post-mortem inventories or last wills, uh, selling, lending, or um, wedding contracts in chronological order. Uh, along with uh, the names, occupation, and uh, addresses of people or organization involved. Um, we deal uh, with um, thousands of handwritings and uh, uh, much more than uh, 600,000 pages either uh, black and white digitized microfilms or color uh, digital um, native images. Our purpose is to enable uh, our customers to search text um, in these uh, images and mine um, data as well. We also want to share uh, our data sets and models with our professional communities. Um, um, to do so, we use uh, two open source softwares developed by uh, the Script uh, PSL team, uh, namely Kraken and eScriptorium. I can uh, run a demo if there is time left uh, after this presentation. So our work uh, with my team at the National Archives uh, consists in drawing these blue lines on the left that we call segments uh, or to correct automated segmentation. Each blue line um, underneath the writing is associated with a polygon uh, surrounding the text and uh, the next step is to write uh, a transcription of the polygon content, content in, uh, in the cell. And then uh, Kraken uh, merges all these data into an alto file uh, with um, the segment and polygon coordinates uh, linked to our transcription. And then uh, these ground truth data are used to train uh, segmentation models or HTR models or in ER models as well. So far we've reached some satisfactory results, for instance, with a 19th century notary, Bruno, uh, we are below 4% um, uh, CR, uh, character error rate. Um, this handwriting is um, uh, very neat and nice, so um, it's quite unexpected uh, CR. Um, as for wedding registers, we're um, still expecting progress. With an 8% CR, we can run um, fuzzy search. We are experiencing more difficulties with golden and random sets because um, 20th century's handwritings can be really, really tricky and sometimes um, uh, very ugly with uh, tight lines and right now there is progress to be done with uh, the segmentation uh, algorithm which is not fit to some uh, 18th uh, sorry 20th century's handwritings. Um, what's to be done 
now still is to write a data management plan. We also need to crowdsource um, ground truth um, data and uh, HDR editing. Um, and as for our customers, uh, we could give them access to flat data in uh, Scriptorium. I've heard that uh, a search engine is uh, being developed in Scriptorium. Um, as for our virtual reading room, we could give access to ground truth, but then again, we need to transform TI files into EAD. And uh, in the meantime, um, we can give, we could give access um, to via TI publisher to uh, the bulk data uh, and enable and enable fuzzy search or um, more complex search that is not available yet in our VRR. So this is um, a prototype that Hugo Scheitauer uh, made uh, with Alex Chage during his um, trainship at INRIA. And as you can see, the layout of the page is reconstructed on the left and each deed, uh, for instance, this inventory is linked to the right person here, Jadin, and separated from other deeds. Um, so that's about it. I don't know if I can uh, run a demo or if I take questions right now. Um. Aurelia, this, this is Tom. There is plenty of time if you would like to run a demo and, and I think it'd be okay. very interesting. Here are uh, two documents um, chosen at random. Um, and uh, I have segmented these documents already. So um, for instance, here is the 18th century um, uh, document um, segments have not been corrected and um, I'm going to run uh, the right the best transcription model which is this one it will take a few seconds and of course, it works better if the segments have been uh, previously corrected. And um, so transcription is running. Um, and um, there are also few uh, names um, in this document because the notary has been working only for a few years. So um, it's easy for Kraken to recognize um, the letters and the names. So I'm sorry, it's a bit... Um, I show you the result on another image that I've processed earlier. So here is the result, and that's row uh, HTR. Oh, I, it's done. So, um, for instance, here it's in French Constitution on the church. So S is missing here, but as you can see, the numbers are correct as well as the first name, except that a T is missing and the family name is correct also. Um, let's see, um, for instance, this line, uh, this is Dudi, uh, 
uh, idem. Um, Kraken got mix, mistaken between N and M, but next words are correct. And um, here too, oh, I think it could be Guyot with an, a T, but it seems to be an L. So if there's time left, I can um, process um, HTR on these 19th century records. Um, this is the right HTR model. Um, I'll show you a previous test. So, um, for instance, this is a notary name correctly uh, spelled and the date, the name is correctly spelled and N is not uh, mistaken with U, for instance, uh, and the Christian names are also correctly spelled. This is a glove maker, it's okay, but here, as you can see, the um, polygon is not correct because the segment must be wrong. So, of course, Kraken couldn't read nor predict Paris, but the, the Amsterdam street is correctly spelled. That's um, the wedding contract regime. And uh, well, I could go on like this, but you see that um, Kraken's performance is quite satisfactory on these uh, um, 19th century records. Um, I might take questions now. Um, while I show you the result on the first image. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, are there any questions or uh, I can take questions afterwards with my INRIA colleagues? I have uh, uh, maybe one quick question now just for clarification. It looks like the user interface is really well suited to doing um, training and some of the uh, correction, uh, OCR, HDR correction that we're accustomed to seeing. Once you have pretty good models, do you envision running this um, in mass to many, you know, to thousands or tens of thousands of documents, or is it a tool to go through document by document? Um, it's a bit early to answer these questions. Um, we are trying to get a generic, a general model um, with say 15%, maybe less CR um, in order to reduce uh, the training, the ground truth data necessary to for um, larger corpora. Um, initially, we thought that we would have like um, model libraries of models, each model for one kind of handwriting. But then, um, according to Daniel Stöckel uh, from PSL, um, our strategy is rather to have to build a general model uh, with ten or fifty percent CR, and then uh, specialize it for um, any uh, handwriting that we would like to, to publish. Um, I don't know if I answered cre clearly um, and sufficiently uh, to your question. 
You did. Thank you very much. That, You're that's, that provides a lot of context. Please. Yeah, so I, I would be curious. So I, I think I'm 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 very interested in in, in this uh, um, projects that that uh, attempt to do uh, handwriting recognition. And I think it's extremely important and of huge value. And uh, I also work with uh, archives that that do that and um, and use the output, let's say, uh, in order to take it uh, further. Um, so I'm curious, what are your plans in terms of um, uh, first of all. Uh, how to when would you call success? Let's put it this way, and why uh, in doing this project? So, is it a matter of um, hitting a, a certain um, character rate or something else? Uh, and then the second question would be how would you use this data? Um, how would you put it at the service of your users? Okay. Um... Success is a matter of point of view, because at the beginning, we, we wanted to know if it was possible to get HDR models. And when it happened with uh, uh, Bruno and reading contracts, uh, at first, I couldn't believe my eyes, and uh, still now, I, sometimes I cannot believe my eyes. So the next step uh, for success would be to be able to proceed correctly and to achieve the same quality of results with uh, a 19th and, and 20th centuries uh, handwritings. And then um, this is just... Um, I'm not going to compare this with an iceberg because it's not uh, the right image, but um, this is only a, a very small part of the business because uh, as I said uh, in, in the end, there, everything is to be um, done for this data to be available in our virtual reading room. And maybe Florence could say something about uh, about um, RIC because uh, there is much to be done also for our VRR to be uh, correctly requested by users. Um, I don't know if, if I'm clear enough, but um, uh, so we have the tools as Alex wrote, um, um, maybe they're not robust enough um, on his scriptorium side. So there's work to be done with Kraken and his scriptorium. There is work to be done with our VRR. There is work to be done also on um, TI publisher and maybe we'll have to choose between TI publisher uh, and our VRR. We won't need uh, TI publisher if our uh, VRR is sufficiently scaled up. So that's uh, for the first question. And uh, as for the users, um, uh, did you mean to uh, um, give them access to the data or, well, um, we need to document also uh, our data sets. I, I think that it's very important for the Alto files to um, indicate uh, uh, the segmentation model, the HTR model. And I don't think that uh, um, these uh, data are, metadata are available in, uh, in the files. So, uh, well, there is a huge work to be done still. <laughs> so I, I shall not call it a success, a, a complete success. Not yet. Let's cross our fingers. Giovanni Aurelia, maybe I can ask you both a question. Um, Giovanni, your, your talk resonates with the keynote that we had at Stanford for the Fantastic Futures Conference. Uh, where we had uh, an expert from industry basically say, the last thing you want data scientists to do is curate the data because they want to do the algorithms. They're 
they just want data. And this is a great role for libraries, archives, and museums to play is to come up with quality data with things like provenance and um, un understanding uh, any biases that may be implicit. Where, where do you see AI work in archives happening? I don't, are you aware of a lot of archives that are building data science teams, or do you think it is more through partnership where perhaps archives are providing the data sets and the, um, the data science is coming through uh, experts in uh, either industry or other research centers? Well, my experience is shorter, I, I guess, but um, I think that in order to be able to, to talk and work together, we need to have to share these skills uh, between um, college and university and archives and GLAMs in general and uh, what we call a private sector in, in France. And what I feel concerned about is that we, I think that with these techniques, we need uh, common standards, just like uh, the W, the 3WC did with the web. And I think that we should uh, work together in order to build up uh, these standards um, for in interoperability uh, purposes. Um, for instance, I, I'm wondering if the models we are building with uh, uh, Kraken uh, could be used uh, with um, transcribers and uh, or uh, with uh, the ARC index uh, tool uh, used by um, Teclia, um, a, a brilliant private enterprise. Uh, so, um, Mm, I think that we we cannot we cannot uh, work by our own. It, it seems evident to me. Um, so I don't know again if I answered the question, but uh, um, uh, we we have huge uh, data sets. Our work as archivists is to document them um, the best as we can. And in order to be able to, to work uh, efficiently, uh, uh, either with college or private sector. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this develops over the next few years in particular. Thank you.